Good afternoon, everyone. Today we have Marlia Finch here to talk about the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program with us. Um, Marlia will be going over this. Everyone is muted, so if you have questions, please use the chat box function. We will keep an eye on that throughout the session. If anything major happens, otherwise we'll answer all of the questions that you have at the end of the training. All right, I'll turn it over to Marlia. All right, thank you, Randa. And before we get started, I will warn you, I did wake up a little congested today, so please bear with me. It's that time of year. But anyway, good, more, good afternoon. My name is Marlia Finch. I'm the Supplementals Program Manager and Special Projects um, person here with the Department of Education. And we are talking about the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program today. So a general overview and how to apply for the program since applications will be opening soon. Um, I see a lot of you are current participants of FFEP. Most of this should be a review for you. But as always, if you have any questions, please put it in the chat and we will address them at the end. And without further ado, we will get started. So here at the department, we have three primary priorities and we fall under the student readiness priority. So that is Tennessee Public Schools with, will be equipped to serve the academic and non-academic needs of all students in their career pathways. So of course, we know we can't teach a hungry child and we are here to support that non-academic need. And as I said before, the agenda, we'll look over our mission statement and objectives, and then an overview of SSVP. Yes, lots of acronyms today. And then we'll talk about what implementation can look like for you, since it does look differently across the state. And then, of course, the contact information of who you may need to reach out to at the state regarding SSVP. So as a school nutrition program, our mission statement is to develop extraordinary school nutritional professionals and provide strategies to increase consumption of healthy school meals. So that is you guys, our school nutrition professionals out there, and we are here to help support you and empower you to provide the best um, programs across the state. Our objectives for this training are to A, let's understand the fresh fruit and vegetable program. Let's learn how to implement the program at your different school sites. And then I will briefly go over on how to apply for the program. And then of course, you'll know contact information. So I'm hopeful that most of you do know what fresh fruit and vegetable program is. But in case you are new and or you have not been interested in the program yet and you want to dabble this year to understand what it is, the fresh fruit program, the fresh fruit and vegetable program is a supplemental program under the National School Lunch Program umbrella. And it provides all children in participating schools with a variety of free fresh fruits and vegetables throughout the school day. It is an effective and creative way to introduce fresh produce items as healthy snack options to students. So the program basics can be found in the FFVP handbook. USDA did create this handbook. Yes, it is a little dated if you go to the website, but I, I assure you that is the only handbook that the USDA has created thus far. And simply put, the goals of the program are to expand the variety of fresh fruit and vegetables um, offered to students. And with the additional offering of produce items, we would assume it would increase consumption as well. And then obviously we want to develop long-term healthy habits of students. And the PowerPoint will be sent out after the training, so you will have access to these hyperlinks and any resources that we share on today's call. 
All right, so we get the overview. Now, how do you implement the program? What does implementation look like at the district level? Well, you first need to serve fresh fruit and vegetable items outside of a meal time for an additional snack option during the school day. So for example, many programs utilize SFEP as a standalone afternoon snack in the classroom, or they take it out to recess. And that could look like a student coming to the cafeteria and picking up all the produce items and taking it back to the classroom for distribution. Um, really whatever works best for your school. Some schools, the cafeteria staff will deliver the produce items to, to classrooms. So again, it's really dependent on your staffing, your capacity, and what your administrator will allow you to do at that school site. And again, just to reiterate, it is the site's discretion on how the program will best suit their needs. Okay, so how will SSBT operate? Well, you are going to tell us how you plan to operate SFBP. Um, if we accept your application and you are awarded um, SFBP, um, that application outlines what your operation is going to look like. We ask for your number of operating days, where you're going to offer SFBP, when. So as you're filling out the application, really take time to be detailed to tell us um, how you plan to operate SSEP if you are awarded. Uh, so really, you're going to tell us how, it, how you're going to operate. As long as you're within the criteria, we encourage at least two times a week, and then obviously you're not serving during a meal time. And then really you have a great flexibility on how, what SSEP will look like at your site. So simply just follow the steps indicated in your approved application. And I know things change during the school year. So if FSVP needs to change and you need to tweak it a little bit, so you were serving in the classroom, now you're going to serve it at recess, not a problem. You can simply just email, email me and let me know, hey, our FSVP operations have changed. It is now this. And then I can go into your application at that note. So it's most current and up to date. All right, so we know what FSEP can look like. Now, what can be served? Well, hence the name, fresh fruits and vegetables. We cannot serve canned, frozen, or dried produce items in this program. You are allowed to serve low-fat or fat-free dips with vegetables only. So low fat is considered that three grams of fat, sorry, it's considered the three grams of fat or less per ounce serving. I know it's really hard to find some of these low fat and fat free dip options. However, they are out there. And again, those are only allowed to be served with your vegetables. And no smoothies or other combination items can be served with FSVP. So again, we're really wanting to hone in on the integrity of the produce items. So showing students what, you know, a true star fruit or jackfruit or something looks like versus mixing it in with items. And cooked vegetables are allowed only once per week and you must have a nutrition education component while you're serving that snack item. So if you are serving cooked vegetables as your SFVP item, you can only do it once a week and you have to have nutrition education during that service time. That's the only caveat with the cooked vegetable is you must have the nutrition education piece as well. All right, so when can we operate SSVP? Well, you can operate it during the school day, but not before or after. It cannot be served during breakfast or lunch. So again, we are separating those meal times. SSVP is a standalone 
service time. And you cannot serve SFEP during the summer. SFEP is intended to operate in the traditional school year. So summer school is out for SFEP, unfortunately. And who can receive fresh fruit and vegetables? All children who are considered enrolled in the SFEP school. So all the enrolled students may receive fresh fruit and vegetables and no cost to them because that's what we use during your, the application process. We do use that enrollment number for allocation. So the enrollment number is basically telling us all the students that are enrolled and that are eligible to receive the fresh fruit and vegetable items. Teachers who are in the classroom can participate, can participate as role models. So if the teacher is actively participating in FFCP, encouraging the students to try something new, they can um, participate and receive fresh fruit and vegetable items. SFCP is not intended for parents, community, or other school personnel. So again, students and actively involved teachers try to encourage that participation from students. All right, so now we know what it looks like, who can receive it, when we can offer, and how it kind of looks as an implementation factor. Now let's move on to what kind of records should you keep for FFVP? All right, so your record keeping requirements, just like anything else with school nutrition, invoices for operating expenses, such as your produce, your supplies, your records of direct and indirect labor should be kept on file. Invoices and records of administrative expenses, such as indirect labors and equipment purchases. And let me hone in on these equipment purchases. You must have written justification totaling 10% or less of administrative funds. So if you are using any FFCP dollars for equipment purchase, you have to have a written justification and any equipment purchased with FFCP funds must be approved prior to any procurement or purchasing items. And that's a simple email to me with your written justification um, as to why you need this and how much of your funds you plan to spend on the item. Again, please get that approved and submitted prior to purchasing any equipment with FFEP. All right, and other things you should keep on hand are the information of publicity of the program. So how are you advertising that FFEP is operating in your school? Do you have a transcript of the morning announcements, just as an example, or any pictures of advertisements that you've used within the school? And I do have an electronic copy of FFVP posters. I do have a handful of um, physical posters. If you would like a physical poster as well, I still have a few of those. Quickest way to get one is an electronic copy, and I do have a copy of that that I can send to you whenever. But yeah, just keeping a copy of something that you use to advertise this program is great um, for your records. And then any information to show that your plan was followed. So any like monthly FFCP menus you may have in your kitchen, that's great. Any production records or any nutrition education materials that were provided throughout um, the FFCP program. Great to keep on hand. All right, so how is FFCP funded? Well, you get two allocations per year. So the first allocation runs from July 1 to September 30th. So that gets you the start of the school year. And then the second allocation is October 1st through June 30th. So that'll get you through the remaining part of the year. All funds must be used or obligated by the close date of the period when it was allocated. So that means if you have $500 to spend July through September, 
please make sure you use that $500 between July and September. And if you have $500 extra left over um, in that first allocation, it does not roll over. So please be very mindful when you're budgeting for FSCP. Go ahead, use that whole allocation amount, especially July through September. Um, and then October through June is its own separate allocation. Does it roll over? And then a reminder that FFEC is a reimbursement program. So you will simply be submitting claims on a monthly basis and then getting reimbursed, just like other programs that you operate. All right. Now for budgeting with the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program. You can use the budget included in the FFVP toolkit on our TDOE website. Again, there is a hyperlink and I will have all these links readily available in the recap email that will go out as well. And as a reminder, please spend as much as you can in your allocation. We highly encourage to spend at least 90% of your funds to the maximum extent possible in order to be considered for the program the following school year. That, that just helps us A, spend the allocation that USDA gave us, and B, to be mindful and make sure you're being good stewards of the funds that you have received. And if a site overspends their allocation amount, you will only be reimbursed for the amount of your allocation. So if you submit a claim for $200 and you only have $150 left in your allocation, you'll only be reimbursed for $150. If you need to move funds between your sites, that is allowable. Please send me an email and I'm happy to move the funds within TMAC so you can see them on your end as well. I know sometimes schools close for whatever reason and you you're not going to operate as many days FFVP wise for that one school since they were closed but your other elementary school could use the funds and you could operate FFVP additional days or something to kind of compensate so please just reach out and I'm happy to work with you to show how that's possible and how we can move funds accordingly to get you covered. It's a very simple process. You just have to let me know before you submit a claim. All right, so how to spend those FSCC dollars? Well, you're gonna spend them on operating costs, like food items, non-food items, delivery charges, direct labor. And you are also going to spend them on administrative costs. Again, those administrative costs cannot equal more than 10% of the total allocation. So admin costs are dur durable equipment, like refrigerators, produce slicers, carts, coolers. Again, you have to get pre-approved to buy any items with FFVC funds. So again, pre-approval before equipment purchased with FFVC funds because that really impacts that admin costs for this grant. And then you could also use admin costs for indirect labor like staffing, um, maintaining records, whatever that may look like for you. Um, this indirect labor can also be considered direct labor charges too if you're preparing for the program. Um, because be mindful, if you are charging those indirect labor costs to admin costs, you still have that 10% threshold that you cannot overdo it. And if you've submitted a claim and you are over that 10% threshold, you'll get an email from me usually saying, hey, can we move this this way so I can reimburse you? Um, yeah, so I know you don't like getting emails from me, especially like that. So <laughs> we'll try to avoid that and be very mindful about those admin costs. All right. So procurement, we've talked about that a little bit with this grant. Competitive purchasing is required, as with all school nutrition programs. 
Micro purchases can be used to obtain local produce as long as appropriate procurement procedures are taken. So again, micro purchases, buying from a local farmer, totally fine with FFVP, but please make sure that you are following appropriate procurement procedures. And this is the fresh fruit and vegetable program. So plan to serve both fruits and vegetables, not the fruit program or just the vegetable program. Let's see a nice combination of fruits and vegetables when you're planning um, your program. All right. And for monthly claims for reimbursement, you will submit a monthly claim for FFE, VP, and TNAP, similar to other programs. And then it is highly encouraged to submit that monthly claim within 30 days of that claim month. So essentially, anything you want to claim for January, claim it by the end of February. But you cannot claim it after the end of March. So that's your 60-day cutoff. Um, or after 60 days of that claim month, um, it is considered late. And as a reminder, you are only allocated one late claim per 36 months across all programs. So that means you can only have one late claim across lunch, breakfast, snack, um, FFVP. So we don't wanna use that one late claim for a $1,500 FFVP claim versus maybe a $12,000 lunch claim. So be very, very mindful of your monthly claims, making sure that they are submitted in time. If you don't want to use that one late, late claim. All right, so now we understand how the program operates, how it's funded, kind of your record keeping and claiming on the back side. Now, how do we apply for this program? Well, first, are you even eligible? So you must be in elementary school. Pre-K through sixth grade are considered elementary schools in the state. And it can be any combination of pre-K through sixth grade. This year, if you are a pre-K through 12th grade school and are interested in applying for the program, please reach out to me prior to submitting an application or attempting to submit an application. And we'll walk through everything, make sure that we're all in agreement on how that will work. Um, so again, this year, this is new. If you are pre-K through 12th grade, please reach out and we will see what that school site looks like for you and how you would be eligible to apply as we will only take enrollment numbers from that pre-K through sixth grade range, and then we'll have to have a plan on how you're going to separate out the other grades. So you will not be servicing seventh through 12th graders with SFEP. This is the elementary school only program. So pre-K through sixth grade are the only ones that can be served SFEP. So yes. Yeah reach out to me and we, I'm happy to work with you to see how we can get that to look within your district. And so not only do you have to be in elementary school, you also have to have at least 50% free and reduced eligible student population. So again, that 50%, that's a hard cutoff. Like anything below that will not be considered. And obviously you must operate in the National School Lunch Program. All right, so how to apply. You will complete an electronic app, an electronic application in TMAC. And there are two parts in the SFBB application. You have your SFA level and then you have your site level. Before you fill out an application for a site level site for FFBP, Please be sure that you have administrative support to even operate the program. I don't want you to waste your time filling out an application and then having a principal saying, no, sorry, you can't implement this program this year. So make sure you have admin support before you start those site applications. 
But again, FFCC applications do have two parts, SFA level and site level. The whole application packet is not complete without both of those um, parts filled out. Typically, if I've noticed you filled out one part and not the other, you'll get an email from me. But just a reminder, there are two parts and the whole application is not complete without both of them. All right, so our SFCP application and award timeline. Uh, the applications will open for next school year soon in TMAC. We'll send out a blurb in the weekly updates when that is open. You have a long application period time because the deadline to submit those applications won't be until the end of April. So hopefully that'll get you through spring break, testing, all that, and then you can be able to have ample time to fill out all of your SFVP applications. And then the state agency, we will sort through all of those applications in May. And then typically, we can't even start crafting those award letters until the USDA has provided our allocations. And typically, we'll get the allocation in June, sometimes early July, and that can will go down our list since we've already sorted those applications and essentially highest ISP gets first dibs and we work our way down until we run out of funds to distribute. So that's kind of how the backside works. And then you'll get a, your award letter late June, early July, just depending on when we get the allocation amount from USDA. And I know I just talked a whole lot. So, I'll take a break and see if you have any questions. Like I said, this is a refresher course for most of you on this call, so that is great. Or if you're like me and you come up with your questions after the fact, totally, totally cool. Um, you can reach out to me um, after the fact if you come up with questions. And let's see here. We did have a question. What's the average allocation per site of around 600 students? Okay, so depending on how much USDA allocates to the state, the state of Tennessee and how many sites apply depends on the allocation per student. So it's typically anywhere between 50 and $75 per student. Last year, we were able to allocate $75 per student based off of the number of applicants and the allocation that we had from USDA. All right, another question is, if you are a CEP, can we only offer the program to pre-K through six? Correct. Um, FFCP is only for elementary age students, and the state of Tennessee defines elementary as pre-K through six. And then the flyers that I mentioned, just send me an email and I can email you the electronic version of the FFCP posters that we have. And again, that can be in the recap email. I can go ahead and attach the poster so everyone has that as an electronic copy. And I do have a few printed copies already. If you do want some printed copies, I can get those in the mail to you. All right. I don't see any other questions at this point. So. I will let you take a moment to fill out the survey link if you don't mind using the QR code there, or I will drop the link in the chat for you. And while you guys are filling out that survey, there was another question. Do you have to offer FFCP daily? or could you do two to three times a week? Yes, it's encouraged minimum to offer two times a week. 
Many schools do offer two to three times a week. There are a handful that offer FFVP five days a week, but that is not the common um, practice. Most people offer two to three times a week. As long as you're meeting the minimum of twice a week, we're good. Great. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please reach out to um, either your regional consultant or you can reach out to me for anything FFBP related. I'm happy to answer any of your questions that you may have or work through different scenarios that you've thought about. That is my contact information. Please feel free to email me or call me. I am here to help you. And yes, local produce is okay to use with FFDP as long as you are following all the micro purchase procurement procedures or small purchases, depending on which method you use for local procurement and local produce. I'll give you guys a couple more minutes to get your last minute questions in there, last minute survey filled out. And I will link the SSVP section from our, our website in the chat so you have access to the Access to the handbook, access to the budget toolkit. Okay, I think, sorry, I linked SMP resources. You can get to it through the SMP resources in that link. Or here is directly the school nutrition program page. And the fresh fruit and vegetable program is at the bottom of the list. So you should have access to all the SSDP resources as in like we have a list of exotic fruits um we have fruit and vegetable pairing suggestions we have the handbook and other usda resources on our website great well i don't see any other questions and i will get give you 30 minutes back because I know we are extremely busy. So I hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday afternoon and I look forward to working with you with FFBP items. Have a great day.